Are you tired of selling your cards on eBay, creating the listing, taking the pictures, front, back, shipping, non-paying bidders? Let the pros at Fanatics Marketplace do all of the work for you. I do. That's why I use Fanatics for my vaulting and for my selling. If you've got a bunch of unwanted inventory that you've been sitting on for days, weeks, months, years, ship it to Fanatics Marketplace and let them do all the work. Just make sure when you ship it, you use the promotional code CAJUN, all capital letters, C-A-J-U-N, and tell them that Cajun Cardboard sent you and let the pros do the rest at Fanatics Marketplace. Hey guys, Brian with Cajun Cardboard coming at you from the great state of Louisiana. PWCC weekly auction recap number 128 ended last night, June 30th. I don't want to waste any time. The story of this is some creepy shit. I'm sorry, some creepy stuff happened in the top 10 highest sales. PMG Reds all over the place. Wimbun Yama Prism PSA 10 parallels as usual all over the place. Some really, really interesting stuff at the top. And uh, I think you're gonna be shocked at uh, the number one overall. It was an all-time record obliterated from an epic 90s card, but it's not Jordan, it's not Kobe, it's not Shaq, it's not Iverson, it's not Duncan, it's not et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. It's uh, probably one of the greatest what-if basketball players of all time from the 90s. I'll let you guys guess as to who that is, but stay tuned till the end and you'll see it's number one. By the way, the Michael Jordan Cajun Cardboard hierarchy posters are still available. If you want more information on how to buy one, how to get one, what they look like, all that, check out the description in this YouTube video. All right, here we go. Top 48 cards starting from the bottom, working our way up. A huge quantity of really important Paolo Banquero cards. So somebody, I'm going to guess, one person decided to get out of their Banquero. I don't know what the deal is with the timing, but you're going to see some whale Paolo Banquero cards. This is just the very beginning. This 2022 Contenders Premium Red <coughs> Horizontal Shimmer. This is serial number to five. Uh, slabbed authentic only for whatever reason, 1,890. Next to that, we've got a card I've never seen. This is a 2023 Tops Now autographs. Victor Wimbanyama, rookie auto, serial to 99. It is Mike Baker uh, authenticated. So it is a raw card, 1,950. Next to that, we got an SG, SGC3 Jordan with horrific corners and edges. All four of them are bad. 2010. Isn't that crazy where a card that looks like this, uh, it's just the most in-demand card in the world. I don't know what else to say in all sports. Uh, next to that, we've got a card that's going to be near and dear to the heart of a local collector here in Baton Rouge. He is uh, one away from the entire 1998 Topps East-West Refractor set in PSA 10. He already had this one. I made sure he knew it was at auction. This 98 Topps East-West Refractor, Tim Hardaway, John Stockton sold for 2070. I don't think I did look it up. Okay, so there's the card. Remember these 98 East West refractors. Everybody knows the Jordan uh, front, Kobe back, and those are really, really cool. Uh, this is the uh, Tim Hardaway and John Stockton front back refractor. It's a very low pop card. Uh, last night it sold for 2070. The sale before that was about a month ago for 750. Hmm, red flag. And then the sale before that was 2130 in March. Red flag. All three sales on PWCC Weekly, guess what? All three were the exact same card, the exact same cert number. So it makes me think uh, this is, we need to throw this out. Somebody needs to take another closer look at this. Um, it sounds like maybe this was a card that sold in March. It, it was shilled. It didn't get paid. 21.30, non-paying bidder. Then it uh, sells in a PWCC Weekly again for 750 in May. Uh, you, you know, March, April, May, two months later, it sells for one third the price. And then here we are a month later and it sells for triple again. So something weird is going on here. Maybe it's just somebody picked one, the same card up in the middle and did great, or maybe somebody accidentally bought it. I don't know, maybe there's more to the story, but it is the all three of these sales that you guys see are the exact same sale. So always do your research on sales like that. Uh, next to that, we got a red power, whatever that means, sounds cool. Victor Wimanyama, serial number to 75, looks like a red starburst to me. 2,190 for that BGS 8.5. That is an awful grade, considering that like 80% of Victor Wimanyama's prism cards seem to be PSA 10. Uh, this card must really be 
in bad shape for somebody to A, send it to BGS, and B, get an 8.5. That's not good. And that obviously knocks the card down. 21.90 for that one. Uh, here's another Paulo Banquero. And the orange is sort of the, uh, the, the poor rich man's card uh, parallel of choice, right? It's serial number to 49, uh, Panini Prism. Uh, has been pretty consistent with oranges being serial number to 49, dating all the way back to, I think they were maybe serial number to 60 in 2013, I'm thinking for some reason. Uh, but eventually, they settled on 49 for whatever reason. This is a Pop 14 in PSA 10. It's Paolo Banquero, 2,220 last night. Good looking card. Weird kind of color combination. But, you know, again, oranges are where you just start to not matter, right? That's just to where the parallels start to not really matter as much. Your blacks, your black shimmers, your seismics, your whatever, you know, you get to 49, you're like, mm, that's a lot of different parallels out there. Look at the Banquero on a death march. Uh, this is the all-time sales history of this particular card in this particular grade. It is a uh, half-price discount, essentially. Started at 3,000, held at 3,000, and then has slowly declined until last, uh, you know, 1580 was the last sale in December of 2023. And then last night, it looks to have rebounded to 2022. 220 so up about $800 from the last sale. I don't know why. We're going to have to pay close attention, guys. Card Ladder does not have a lot of these PWCC sales from last night in uh, the Card Ladder graphs yet. So let's make sure we stay pay close attention to that. That's something that i got to get better at and make sure we're all on the same page because I don't want to give you misleading information. I'm just trying to move numbers along to you guys and let you make your own decisions. This is an interesting choice. And again, I don't know if this is on PWCC or if maybe the seller's like, I got both. I want to run them both. You know, I, we don't know that but if it's on pwcc probably not a good look or fanatics collect i guess we could call it uh but it still says pwcc on the website soon it'll say fanatics collect i think july 9th is when that official transition occurs just before the cleveland national 2023 prism red seismic serial number to 299 isn't the red also serial number to 299 so i don't know maybe they're just doubling it up 2250 for that Victor Wimanyama card. I looked it up, and this is exactly right on the number what we expected. So it doesn't look like too much damage was done by listing two of the exact same uh, parallels and the exact same grade of Victor Wimanyama in the auction. Uh, an 80C Kareem Tallboy rookie does 2400 <coughs> A BGS 9 last 11 rookie of the year's star Jordan card does 2520 and then here's the red yeah so i was right so red's number to 299 red seismic's number to 299 i think the red flat red looks better that's just me personally let me know what you think in the comments uh this one does outperform it by about 500 bucks 2760 for the victor 299 red flat red and then another paulo Banquero, another relatively important card this is his sensational signature so not his rookie signatures it's the kind of substandard the, the next level down of the prism sticker signatures autograph uh, rookie cards, but it is still a rookie. It's just not his true rookie signatures, right? Uh, PSA 9, 10 for the autograph. Serial number to 10, of course. Gold is serial number to 10 still with Prism, as far as we know. 2,880 for that one. More Wimbanyama flavor. This is his 2020 Bowman Inception autograph. And this is just, I want to warn you guys. Um, and this is something that you're, you're, I mean, I guess the hobby's just going to figure this out. Uh, just like when Shaq was a rookie, uh, just like when LeBron was a rookie, um, you know, these manufacturers are going to chase the dollar. They are going to squeeze the hell out of uh, these uh, transcendent generational rookie players. And I think I can safely say that about Victor Wimanyama and certainly at least about the hype surrounding him. This is a word to the wise and just a warning to you guys. This card would appear to be a rare card. You would think pulling a rookie autograph card, getting it graded 10 would be very rare. This is the pop report. There are already 171 of this Bowman Inception autograph PSA 10 graded. You will notice PSA, and this has been talked about in the hobby, is grading Victor Women Yama cards, not just Prism, all of his rookie cards at a very, um, not a high clip, well, a high clip for sure, because they printed the hell out of them, but they've graded them uh, very favorably, let's just put it that way. 77% gem rate on this autograph by PSA. 84% by Beckett with seven BGS 10s. Um, SGC, 27%, not so friendly. Uh, but just kind of keep that in mind. Be very careful. We're pushing over 200 uh, Jim Mint copies of the Victor Wimanyama Bowman Inception autograph already. And here we are. It's not even been out a year. So 
just something to be careful about, something to keep an eye on. Like I said, I think we all who have been in the hobby for a long time already know what's going to happen. They're just going to print and print and print and print and print. And then about four years from now, people are finally going to look back and say, wait, there's 8,000 prism parallels. There's 6 million select and optic choice parallels of different colors and uh, different goat skin animal cards. Maybe we shouldn't have uh, overreacted when those cards first released and uh, hit the buy now button, but we shall see. Uh, Jordan 5.5 does 3,000. That's his 86 Fleer 57 of 2002. Another Banquero. Damn near every line we're looking at, there's a really good looking Paolo Banquero card. I don't know where you guys are with him. He has a lot of Blake Griffin vibes to him. Obviously, he's not that athletic. I just mean his build. Like, he, he strikes me as a, a really uber athletic, uh, just built ready for the NBA, Blake Griffin type body, putting up Blake Griffin type numbers maybe not quite to that extreme on the points and rebound side but certainly he can uh he has some, a lot of skill set that blake griffin had maybe even more of a skill set than rookie blake griffin uh 3120 this is the gold parallel serial number to 10 with a really badass patch and i always like immaculate serial numbered uh again to 10 the gold parallel there uh caitlin clark uh michael jordan bgs 9 1984 nike ad poster cards um I've always just called this the Nike promo. Is this something different? What is going on here? I don't know what that is. Um, that's not what I would call that. Nike ad poster cards. Maybe there's more to the story here. Let's look at it real quick. Because, again, maybe I'm getting an education here. Uh, 1984 Nike ad cards. Yeah, so I'm used to seeing the 1985 Nike promo. Nothing on the back. Interesting. So a little, a little variation, a little twist here. Uh, I am learning something. Like I said, you learn something new in the hobby every day. I just looked at it and thought it was a Nike, 1985 Nike promo card. It's not. Uh, oh, my God. Another <laughs> Paolo Banquero. Every line, we see one. Serial number to 10, gold contenders. We saw the red shimmer earlier. The gold outsells the the red, despite it's being uh, serial number twice as many. Serial number 10, 3240 for that one. That's a pop one with six higher PSA 10s. Um, we got a Jordan 1984 star. This is his uh, number 288 rookie of the year. So one of his three 1984 star uh, base cards. Of course, there's the Court Kings as well. 3,240 for this BGS six. That looks like a harsh grade, man. Jeez, I'm six. I know it's off center left to right, but damn, dude. Um, and I guess it's all centering. They were that's even for centering. That's pretty harsh. Golly, uh, five for centering. So you raise it one point. The highest it can get is a six overall. That's what you got. Uh, 2003 Jambalaya Kobe, a fake Jambalaya, the 2003 version, 3,360, shouldn't say fake, it's a retro, uh, 3,360, which is why it sold for 3,000, not, you know, 13,000. 1969, uh, Lou Alcindor, aka Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, PSA 7, old label, does 3,360. And then we've got a B, uh, a BGS, I guess it's BGS, yeah, no, BVG, BGS, a BGS 3.5, uh, very good plus, a Bill Russell, 1957 Tops Rookie. Uh, and next to that, we got a Black Disco Prism 1 of 1 LeBron James. It does 3,600 in a PSA 9 slab. And then we've got a Steph Curry, 2009 Panini Rookies and Stars. Uh, this is pretty cool because it's a, uh, it's a patch fabric in the big gigantic window in there and then the autograph is actually on the fabric. I don't know if you guys like that or not. It's a BGS 9.5. I wonder if the auto got a grade. Let's click in and look. The auto did get a grade and it did get a 10. And again, it's serial number to 499. You can only make your autograph look so vibrant when somebody hands you a Sharpie and says, sign the fabric, right? It's not like signing a sticker or signing the actual you know, acetate or the actual paper card itself. So 3,600 for that Steph rookie card there. Here's another one I wanted to to click into and look at because this is really cool and again uh, i'm not the biggest you know warriors fanboy out there but uh it's pretty cool uh, and if we kind of you know go down the list here we'll start with festus azili who's probably at the bottom uh harrison barnes is in here um iguodala andrew bogan a lot of people forget he was integral to that uh, championship run sean livingston superman uh, off the bench along with uh andre iguodala steph curry clay thompson harrison barnes and draymond green pretty neat card this is a booklet card obviously it folds out it is nba certified you can send these i know to bgs and they'll grade them on the 
assuming PSA would grade this thing too. It is a uh, Panini Preferred, uh, one of one, and I think it's eight. Yeah, it's called Crazy Eights. So there's eight wild ass Adidas patches on here. Uh, pretty cool. And I guess you'd have to read the back and we could zoom in or whatever if you want to read the back here and figure out where the patches come from. Maybe it doesn't say where the patches come from. I don't know. I guess you got to do your own research on that. But just pretty cool and an Octa patch card right there. Uh, LeBron and Tracy McGrady dual autograph patch card from 2006 SP game used. A uh, real weak LeBron autograph there. Again, I don't know shit about autographs, but I know that's not a great one. 3,720. Here's a card I want to look at uh, because he's, uh, I don't know if he's been dealt to the Mavericks, but it sounds like the Mavericks are in the mix. And uh, we might get a revenge Clay Thompson um, you know, version this coming season where he can just stand in the corner and catch and shoot. He would fit very well in Dallas. Let's just put it that way. We're not as much as expected. Clearly third at best, third fiddle, fourth fiddle, whatever. You call it what you want. This is a BGS 10 black label, and I'm going to call out PWCC slash Fanatics. They screwed this up. It says BGS Population 8. It is not. It is a BGS Population 1. Uh, and let me show you what I mean by that. There is the card in all of its glory and splendor, and it is gorgeous with that black label. I know grades are grades and buy the card, but... That just it just gives it a little extra oomph and it's a really cool deal. Uh, the card sold for three thousand nine hundred and sixty. First, let's say let me just show you the mistake that was made. If you look at the pop report, there it is. There's one black label. There are eight regular BGS tens, but this is the black label, which takes it another level above. It's a pop one. That's kind of relevant, and so to get that wrong is pretty much unforgivable. I don't know if it affected the outcome because anybody with a brain can look at the card and look up the pop. Um, but it certainly didn't help. Let's just put it that way. 75% gem rate uh, with uh, BGS. And again, uh, silvers were rare back then. Look, even to this day, and that's with a lot of crack and resubs, there's only been 155 graded between PSA and BGS. So in 2012, silvers meant something unlike they do today, where they mean absolutely nothing. But this car is on a horrific, horrific trend. And again, there's only one of them. 27,000 the cards sold for in 2021. Remember 2021 when insanity was ensuing? 10,800, we thought that was bad. We thought that haircut was bad a year later. Well, let's go another year later, 59.99, 6,000 essentially, horrific. And then last night, 3,960. I think people are just done with Clay Thompson. I know his game doesn't look the same, although he did have a little bounce back second half of the year after the benching and all the nonsense. Um, but a great looking card nonetheless. And again, it's a pop one. It's Clay Thompson. He's a first ballot Hall of Famer, like it or not. He's a top 10 shooter that ever lived. Um, tons of great stories. Again, I don't have a Clay Thompson card other than the base uh, 2012 PSA 10, which is part of my set. Uh, so I have no dog in this hunt, but good Lord, 3,960 uh, is pretty impressive. Uh, and oppressively low, I should say. So uh, that is a really sad story from 27,000 to 4,000. We've seen that with a few cards of great players. LeBron downtown from 2022, and uh, that's one and one, Panini's one and one product, 4,200. And then this is, uh, this sale is too low. Uh, I'm gonna say it, and I'm gonna be pissed at myself because I didn't pick it up. This 1997 Stadium Club Triumvirate Illuminator, remember there's the Luminous, that's the base. And these are always mislabeled by BGS and PSA. But the base is called the Luminous. The middle tier is called the uh, Luminescent. And then the most rare, and it's very, very, very rare, is called the Illuminator. Each one of the cards has different characteristics regarding its translucent nature and or refractive nature. There is a T1B, which is what you're looking at. There is also a T9B. And then there's also a members only parallel of the Luminous uh, base version. This is the 97 T1B with the hardwood crazy die cut in the background. It is a BGS 9.5 with two tens and it sold last night for only $4,200. This is an, a, a shocking sale. There's the card up close so you can see just how interest, intricately die cut that card is. It is badass. 
4200 is actually down for a Jordan card, almost a grand uh, from the last sale uh, on Golden in November of 2023. Uh, 2640 was the sale of this card in 2022. So unlike Clay Thompson's silver black label, which is down like 8 billion percent, uh, this card from 2021, uh, where it was about 1700, 1800, is still uh, about two and a half X. So um, again, I just want to show you. There's not that many of these graded between PSA and BGS. If you add it up, there are only 33 gems and there are only 59 total graded, total graded between the two grading companies. The Illuminator is rare indeed. It is a card you will find on the Cajun Cardboard Michael Jordan Hierarchy Project and poster prominently displayed. I think it's a tier two card, the Illuminator. Uh, then the Luminescent falls to tier three and then I think the Luminous is a tier four. I might be wrong. I'm just the guy that put that together, but I still don't remember because I have an old Cajun brain. Factory set women Yama. This is interesting. I'd like somebody in the comments to let me know. I remember when these 2023 factory sets came out. Did I mention that Panini Prism, that Panini was going to chase the dollar in Victor Wimanyama's rookie year? They printed these factory sets and it was 150 of them and they sold them for X number of thousand dollars. And, uh, and there was a Victor Wimanyama rookie in there and the cards looked a little bit different as you can see by looking at the card right there. Uh, this is his factory card. This came out of that sealed factory set. You know how like we used to buy back when we collected baseball cards when we were younger in our 20s, you know, teens, 20s, 30s, whatever, in the 80s and 90s. Well, there was a factory set from 2023 Prism. Somebody cracked it open, yanked out the women, Yama yeah, graded it and came back a PSA 10. And look at this, 4,320. I don't remember what the whole factory set sold for, but I don't think it was 4,320. Somebody in the comments let me know. I feel like that is a really good flip because now you have a partial set you can go sell for something, I would think. More Boncaro. Uh, I think this is just ugly as hell. I've always thought that the, uh, the kind of the, is that's not a, uh, that, that starburst, I just don't like that starburst pattern. I'm, I don't know if I'm the only one that doesn't like that, but I know some people do. Some, some people like it to the tune of 4,300 bucks. This is a select gold rookie patch auto, serial number to 10, two color patch if you squint hard enough. Uh, 4,320 for that Boncaro. Again, this is a lot of Boncaro going down in this auction. And then I want to show you the power of this little guy right here. See this A up here? If you're wondering, what is that A? Well, it's a PWCCI appeal sticker. Anytime you submit a card prior to the year uh, 1986 or older, PWCC uh, gives a free I appeal assessment. If they deem that your card stands out and is one of the finer examples of that card in that particular grade, right? It's not just PSA 10s. They look at all the grades. Uh, they will assign an eye appeal sticker. There is a top 30% A eye appeal sticker. There is a top 15% uh, E eye appeal sticker for exceptional. And then there is a top 5%, which is crazy rare, and I can vouch from experience, uh, an S top 5% sticker for superior. This got just the weakest of the stickers, but let me show you the power of the sticker. This is the 86 Fleer Jordan sticker. Obviously, it's his uh, extra rookie card, his first insert ever, right? 4,320 for this PSA 9. There it is. That's what it looks like, right? That's what a copy looks like. This is not in uh, the card ladder data here, right? But this is what the graph looks like. First of all, the card's doing really well over the last three months. It's sold 22, it's actually 23 times, and it is up 31.45%. So good news if you're an owner of a PSA 9 Jordan Fleer sticker. Uh, this was the last sale, 3,977. This one last night sold for 4,320. Don't ask me why, it's just not in card ladder yet. So uh, 4,320, that sticker uh, would make it the second highest selling by about 50 bucks sale of the last 23 sales. So the sticker does matter. Usually on this chart, if a card sells with an eye appeal sticker, it'll have a little yellow dot. Let me see if I can find y'all one here. Uh, I don't see any yellow dots, which seems really odd. It seems really, really odd. Okay, so I don't see any yellow dots on there, but I was going to show you. Uh, next to that, we got a Kobe Bryant BGS. In, in other words, in a nutshell, the sticker did really well last night, and the PWCC IPL sticker didn't hurt for sure. Really good sales. Second highest of the last 23 sales. USA Basketball Autograph Kobe Gold Parallel Serial Number to 10 does 4440. Really good looking card there with him doing a reverse double pump dunk. 2020 Flawless Vertical Patch Autograph Steph Curry Serial Number to Only 15 Does 5040 uh, Victor Wimanyama Tops Now Autograph I still I get confused when I hear Tops Now Is that like a print on demand thing And they make as many as I thought it was a deal where 
they announce it you, if you want it you buy it and they print as many as are ordered but apparently you can also get serial numbered where they only print a certain number imagine that tops and panini chasing that wimby dollar 5160 that's a car that will not be worth that in five years 97 this is where the insanity begins okay and look i i've got a teardrop coming from my eyes i was a former uh mega i can actually say i was a super collector of 1997 uh original precious metal gem reds from the one of the greatest sets of the 90s 97 metal universe this is a rod strickland cool color match card uh for one of the uh most underrated point guards of all time he was a dog uh this 1997 pmg red strickland sold for five thousand one hundred and sixty dollars last night there's the card and he's got a grimace on his face uh, there it is. It's only the record by 2x. Uh, yes, this more than doubled the highest price ever paid. And let me show you why. It's not a Rod Strickland super collector. We both know who it is. It is a set collector with uh, deep pockets and he's dropped it on the table and for lack of a better word and this is the highest grade you could possibly achieve in PSA and that is what most people want their PMG Reds in because those red cards match those red labels and because um, the, of the authenticity guarantee and money back guarantee that PSA guarantees so uh, you'll see uh, again 31 ever graded remember these are uh, there's only 90 of these they're serial number 200 but there's only 90 because 10 are green uh, so you only have 90 left um, and uh, here you go. There's yeah, serial, yeah, serial number. And then you got a, a PSA seven uh, pop two for the Rod Strickland. That is the highest grade you can get. And so somebody dropped it on the table last night and said, "I'll take it." Fifty one sixty, and they weren't alone because somebody chased them up to that number. So fifty one sixty. Remember this, nineteen ninety seven PMG Red all time record, twice the highest price ever paid before last night. Uh, the Bill Russell 61 Fleer PSA 8 does 5280. And this is interesting because this is a card uh, that I thought was a pretty cool card. Pop 169. I guess a PSA 9 is going to cost a bazillion dollars. I don't even need to look. But look at this card getting murdered over the last two years. Uh, 3,786 was the last sale. This one actually was a good bounce back. And I thought so because it's a good looking copy. And so look what the card had done over the last two years. Just terrible. Down 57%. This one jumped up to, what did we say, 5,200 something. So somewhere uh, back around uh, the October of 2023 price. So a little indication that we're making a decent little comeback. And again, you got to look at all these because, you know, maybe the last PSA uh, 8 did not look like this PSA 8, right? So you're always looking at that. Okay, we we had our, our, our lesson on the on the uh, triumvirates. This is the T9B. So this is the other, uh, the version with the lightning. Uh, Michael Jordan from 1997 uh, stayed. Stadium Club. This uh, Luminous, which is the base, is a PSA 10, and it outsold the Illuminator BGS 9.5 that we looked at earlier. That does not make sense. That should not happen. That That is um, illogical to say the least. It defies logic. It is a um, it is an anomaly. Uh, well, it's not an anomaly in the hobby. It's almost predictable that PSA 10 would carry such a premium. But this PSA 10 base, again, it says luminous. It's the base. T9B does 5520. And here you go. That is the highest price ever paid. So another Michael Jordan 90s insert in PSA 10 condition breaks the all-time record uh, by uh, quite a bit, honestly. It's about a 10%, and uh, the record before that was uh, more than double the highest price ever paid back in 2022. So again, unlike Clay Thompson's silver black label BGS-10, uh, the Michael Jordan market seems to be doing okay since the 2021 uh, bubble, at least on some cards. Uh, Shaq Black Prism 101 PSA 9 does 5760 uh, and then a really really good look and every time I see one of these upper deck autograph cards where they sign it in the gold sharpie I'm like you know what I might collect autographs these are just so good looking uh, and I'm sure they're very difficult to grade because it's black everywhere it's black on everything every corner edge etc 2006 upper deck black dual gold Jordan Rodman serial number to 10 BGS 9 does 5880 uh, a Kaboom Doncic BGS 9 does 7500 that's a rookie card that's a big number for a silver label bgs9 and then another lebron black one of one that's a great looking card right there man it's a nice looking grade too and that bgs 9.5 uh this one of one with a little diamond in the middle does 7500 uh, and then we get into some craziness right uh, we're about to get to some more pmg red nonsense but this is the 1995 
finest mystery bordered test refractor it's a card you're going to see in tier two of the hierarchy project this one sold for nine thousand dollars last night and you're thinking to yourself damn that's a lot of money for a card i've never heard of in my life it's a great looking card but what the hell are you even talking about cajun uh, this is the 95 finest mystery test refractor. It's been mislabeled. It's been called different things It's been called orange refractor or whatever Sometimes they leave test out really hard card to search for to be quite honest with you Well last night it sold for nine thousand dollars, which is a lot of money But the sale before that was uh, in 2022 and it sold for fifteen thousand one hundred dollars. That was serious uh, sort of uh, BGS cert number 725 back then last night BGS cert number 725 so it's the same card so somebody took a little bit of a bath on this one uh, 9,000 I don't know this is one of those cards it just doesn't sell enough we don't even know if it was a good buy or the other one was a terrible buy there's your pop report there's 68 of them ever graded by BGS as you can see I don't know this for sure but my conclusion would be that PSA will not grade this card for whatever reason Maybe it wasn't pack issued. I don't know the story behind the card. Josh Dawson from Northeast Sports Cards probably explained this during the hierarchy project. But again, let's go back to my old Cajun brain. I just don't remember. Uh, so uh, comment below if you know more about this card and the price and the pop and uh, whether PSA grades it and how the card was actually issued. I know the word test leads me to believe maybe it wasn't in packs. I don't, I don't know that for sure. Uh, but BGS 9.5 makes it a pop 7. Um, so a, a rare card indeed, a card that I do need. I, I just I don't have it on my nine thousand dollar radar. I'm still legacy and platinums. If I'm going to pay that amount, I'm going to pick up a legacy or a platinum, a more recognizable, more historic, more established Jordan card. But uh, interesting sale last night uh, for that card. Next to that, we got an eight point five Jordan uh, nine thousand three hundred, and then here we go again. Nineteen ninety seven Metal Universe PMG uh, serial number to hundred. Again, there's only ninety. This is the Sean Bradley. Yes. Yes, Sean freaking Bradley. We thought Rod Strickland was obscure to pay, uh, you know, five grand for. How about a Sean Bradley for twelve thousand six hundred dollars? And let me get, let me let you guess. Is this the highest grade? Yeah, it's the highest grade. Here we go again. Where's the Sean Bradley? There it is. Uh, an interesting uh, looking uh, pose of Sean Bradley, not drawn to scale. It was actually much thinner than that. <laughs> Uh, and I think he got in a horrible bicycle accident, so I'm gonna keep it um, keep it PG here. Uh, Twelve thousand six hundred is only four hundred percent, you know, four hundred percent of the highest all time sale in history. So twenty five eighty four was the most any PMG red Sean Bradley had ever sold for. This one last night goes for twelve thousand six hundred dollars. Highest in class right there, pop one. What else can we say? Uh, that is a humongous, humongous number. And then here we are on our top three. And I didn't lie to you. Number one is a PMG, and it's from the one of the greatest what-if basketball players of all time. What if Grant Hill didn't have... 49 different ankle surgeries what if he had stayed healthy i know there's been 15 the next jordans well he really was on the path to look like the next jordan again we'll never know uh, but then of course uh ankle injuries derailed his career still ended up being a hall of famer but ankle injuries you know changed the um the uh, the path the trajectory of his career uh, but before that we've got a snakeskin another Paolo Boncaro made the top three how fitting thirteen thousand eight hundred for this one of one courtside black snakeskin Paolo Boncaro rookie one of one PSA ten thirteen thousand eight hundred I've got it actually pulled up. Uh, there you go. So there's the card right there. And yeah, this card's actually sold twice. The same exact card. Obviously, it's a one one Sold for 19000 in August of 2023. So almost a year ago, about 10 months ago, right? Is that, does that sound about right? And then uh, $6,000 less, $5,500 less, something like that. So pretty nasty haircut. Somebody just took on that card right there. Um, big card though. Uh, and then next to that, we've got an old, old label, Michael Jordan, uh, PSA nine, and it's a bad nine. Uh, there's no other way uh, really to say it. It is noticeably off center left to right. And I know you're going to say, well, all nines are off center. Yeah, but you know, I, I've looked at enough of these and I, I'm sure a lot of you guys watching have as well. This is a really bad one. Uh, and so it is not in the card ladder database. The last one sold for over 20,000. It was consistently selling for at or near 20,000 up to 23,000. Occasionally one would drop down to 18,000, but over the last six, five of them sold for 20,000 or more. And this is going to kill comps because it's just a bad copy. It's an old label that somebody typed on a typewriter, 16,800 for that one. So uh, keep that in perspective.
just out of curiosity, what is that car doing over, let's say, the last three months? Up 32%, okay? So high pop card, 2,990, Jordan doing well. What about the last six months? 36% over the last six months. What about the last year? 36%. So anybody seeing anything happening here with the 86 Fleer Jordan is 153 enough of a sample size for the PSA 9 Jordan to draw conclusions? I think it probably is because we've looked at a bunch of different time windows. What about the PSA 8? Just curious. Up 6% over the last year, up 10% over the last six months, up 11.8% over the last three months, up 16% over the last month. So something's happening. Somebody pay attention. Somebody do something. I've played that game. I'm not doing it. I've got my Jordan rookie and rookie sticker, and I'm I'm set there. I'm not looking to jump in and play those uh, numbers games. Uh, but uh, comment below if you guys have noticed the trend of this 86 Fleer 57 Jordan in 8 and 9 uh, doing better. And we could obviously go look at the 7s too. I don't know if the 7s are going to carry because there's really a lot of those. Hell, the Pop 8s. That pop on the PSA 8 is 8,824. Yikes, that's a lot. What about the 7? Surely that's not going up. Over the last month, up 15%. Over the last three months, up 13%. Over the last six months, up 3%. Over the last year, up 5%. So green everywhere. You guys draw your own conclusions. All right, let's talk about the winner. The highest selling card in last night's June 30th PWCC weekly auction number 128 was none other than Grant Hill, um, who's that guy in that? Is that Leon Poe? Who is that guy? Who is, is that a Celtic? I can't tell who that is in that picture. Somebody let me know who that is. This is the card right here, guys, uh, that sold last night. Uh, great looking card. Again, serial number to 100. Uh, got a nice break to get a 7 on this because there's a noticeable white chip in the top right. Buy the card, not the grade. Well, maybe not when you're talking about PMGs. Uh, and of course, we know the reason. Here it is. There's, uh, there's the exact same card. That's it. That's the Grant Hill PSA 7. Is that Leon Poe? I can't tell. Did Leon Poe play in 1997? I didn't think he was that old. Uh, or maybe somebody else. It might be Todd Day. I don't know who that is. Somebody tell me who that is that played for the Celtics uh, back in 97 that's trying to guard Grant Hill and failing miserably. $24,000 is only $10,000. $9,900 higher than the highest price ever paid for any Grant Hill PMG Red. So we saw three PMG Reds. Rod Strickland doubled the highest price ever paid. Uh, Sean Bradley obliterated the highest price ever paid. Grant Hill obliterated the highest price ever paid. And this PSA 7, guys, as you guessed it, is the second highest uh, Grant Hill card out there. The PSA 8 is the highest. This PSA 7 last night is the second highest. There are people with a lot more money than you and me on the PSA set registry trying to be top dog on that 1997 PMG Red uh, set registry chase. Namely, uh, a gentleman uh, who uh, yeah, deals in candy up in Chicago, in the Chicago area, and then uh, the CEO of a very uh, recognizable uh, grading company in the hobby. Those are two, to name a couple, that are chasing uh, the highest set possible. There's also a gentleman out west uh, we call him West Coast Whale, who dabbles in it in the shadows. He doesn't make himself public, doesn't do stuff on IG, but has an incredible collection and bought me out of my 1997 PMG Red set. And so when you get guys like that with FU money who want to put together and curate the greatest, one of the greatest sets of all time in basketball card collecting, and they're looking for the highest graded copy of even players like Rod Strickland and Sean Bradley, crazy numbers, uh, you know, come out of the woodwork. So uh, over $40,000 spent last night on PMG Reds, and you didn't hear the name Kobe Bryant, Michael Jordan, or, uh, you know, Tim Duncan or Tracy McGrady mentioned. So that's it, guys. Uh, going back on our top 10, we got Grant Hill, Jordan Boncaro. We got Sean Bradley, Jordan Jordan. We've got LeBron James, Doncic, Jordan Rodman. And then we've got uh, a Shaq one of one sneaking in there uh, for a little bit over uh, $5,700 as well. So that's it, guys. That's it for the PWCC Weekly Recap. If you guys like these PWCC Weekly Recap videos, don't pay me for them. Just hit the like button. It helps me with the YouTube algorithm. Hit the subscribe button for God's sakes. I do these videos every single Monday. And so you can kind of keep your fingers on the pulse of the high-end hobby. 
and uh, in the PWCC marketplace. If you want to support the channel, if you're like, you know what, I want to do more than hit the like button. I want to do more than just subscribe to the channel. I like this dude. He talks fast. He gets a lot of content out there to us on a very consistent basis, maybe the most consistent in the hobby, some would say. Uh, there is a way where you can financially support the channel, at least for now. I don't know if I'm going to get dropped by Fanatics or not, um, but hopefully I have your vote of approval to continue doing these. Uh, if you want to support the channel and you sell or you vault on PWCC slash Fanatics Collect, whatever we're going to call this thing, uh, and you want to sell cards on these types of auctions, the weekly or the big granddaddy of them all for $15,000 or more cards, the premier auctions, which occur once a month, there's a way you can support the channel, but it doesn't cost any money out of your pocket. When you submit cards to your vault or you submit cards to sell in these PWCC Fanatics auctions, you can use the promo code CAJUN, C-A-J-U-N, all capital letters, to support the Cajun Cardboard YouTube channel. That's the only way I get paid to do this right now. I'm going to roll up into Cleveland and try to get some more sponsorships. Forgive me, I have to chase the dollar. Uh, desperate times call for desperate measures. So I'm gonna try to get a little more intentional about this. I've resisted the urge to kind of sell out to YouTube and do all the commercials and the interruptions and sell Cialis and Viagra and every prescription medication in the world. I don't want that crap appearing on my channel. So I'm gonna try to get some deals cut up in Cleveland and maybe I can convince somebody else out there that my big mouth can actually steer some traffic. Uh, albeit organically, I'll never promote a product, a platform, an entity, a service, or anything that I don't use myself and truly believe in. Um, like, in other words, you're not going to see me. Well, I, can't, I don't want to say that because I'm not going to disparage anybody out there. But uh, you're not going to see me promoting uh, some type of uh, football card uh, breaking or something like that, right? Because I have no, I have no experience in that. So the stuff that that you'll see me speaking positively about is stuff that has been tried and true that I have uh, come to accept and implement in the way that I collect and uh, you know navigate the hobby. I will never talk about something that I don't have firsthand knowledge of or uh, certainly I would not recommend something. PWCC, I certainly can recommend because it has changed the way that I collect. So if you want to support the channel, you want to know more about it, DM me on Instagram. Use the promo code CAJUN, all capital letters, C-A-J-U-N, when you submit your cards to PWCC weekly or premier monthly auctions. And by the way, they've cleaned up, and I did a video on it. It's coming out soon. They have really cleaned up the fixed price marketplace. They now are pulling down cards that have been uh, stagnant, that have been stale, that have been on there for over 90 days. So if somebody lists this 86 Fleer Jordan that's for 16,000. If they had it listed on there for 100 grand and 90 days go by, they pull it down without your consent and they put it back in your vault. And if you want to relist it, you can, but you got to go through the trouble of relisting it on the fixed price marketplace. So guys, go check out the fixed marketplace. There may be some cards on there that are actually reasonably priced for a change. I've been uh, shouting from the mountaintops for months and weeks and years, honestly, uh, that the fixed price marketplace needs to get cleaned up and it's been cleaned up. And so uh, you guys go check that out. It's, uh, it's a good place to find some cards that are maybe uh, sneaking under the radar. Thank you guys as always for watching. I truly hope you guys, I know I'm going to, have a great week in and out of the hobby uh, this first week of July. Happy 4th of July for those of you out there. Not to sound too, uh, too overly patriotic, but uh, I am so happy and blessed and thankful that I was born in this country. There's a lot of shitty things about this country, especially lately, uh, but it doesn't change the fact that I'm proud to be from here. And I hope that doesn't come off as uh, abrasive or uh, rude to those non-Americans that watch the channel because there's a million of y'all all over the world from Europe, from Asia, from Australia especially, uh, and I love you guys as well. But uh, I don't think we should be ashamed of our country, and that goes for anybody from any country. Um, you know, and so, um, uh, 4th of July, uh, means a little bit more to me each and every year, uh, as we get further and further away, uh, from what it was that our founders intended our country to look like. As we get further and further from it, I cling more and more to it and, uh, hope for the best. And so, uh, anyway, that's as political as I'm going to get, uh, you know, enjoy your 4th of July. Even if you're in another country, I don't know if y'all get stuff for 4th of July or shoot fireworks. Probably not. It's probably only Americans. Uh, but that shows you how much I leave the country. I don't even know. Thank you guys for watching. Keep collecting. Have a great week in the hobby. Uh, and peace.